Over the last couple of months, we've been taking a look at some of the cheapest graphics cards currently available. Those graphics cards are from AMD, and today we want to actually bring them all together and see which one actually makes more sense to the budget gamer. Okay, so the three graphics cards that we've actually been taking a look at are these. This is the RX 6400, this is the RX 6500 XT, and the one at the back here is the RX 6600. Now these are the three cheapest graphics cards currently available from AMD, and even in their own advertisements, they actually classify them as the entry-level cards. Now they are cards from the last generation because AMD currently are kind of reserving their 7000 series for the ultra enthusiast. And to be honest, we haven't actually been that disappointed with any of these cards because within their own right, they're actually pretty good cards. Now there is a sliding scale on the price of these cards, they kind of fit in well with each other, but if we take a look at the specifications on paper, we can see there's a significant difference between them all. At the bottom we have the RX 6400, now this is a 4GB card and it does suffer from some of the uh, PCI generation issues that AMD established, particularly in the low end, but it does kind of serve its place because you can actually get these in small form factor and they're quite powerful for small form factor cards. And you also have the benefits of low power consumption. So these generally run at around 53 watts and they don't require any additional power supply. So even though it is a low spec card and you have to kind of get the machine right that you're putting it in, it does seem to have its place. The next one in line is the RX 6500 XT. Now this is probably the one that's a little bit out of place, even in any of the lineup, because it doesn't have any of the benefits of the RX 6400. You do require additional power. It does have a weird PCI generation, so that means that running it in anything less than PCI Gen 4, you're gonna kind of run it into performance issues. And it also only has four gigabytes of RAM, so those are actually the lowest two. Then we have the RX 6600. Now this has been one of the most impressive cards to us so far from AMD, particularly when we're looking at the low end because it is reasonably cheap and the cards seem to be built extremely well. When we were actually doing our performance review of this card, we were super impressed with what it could actually do. And particularly the model we had was the Asus Dual 8 gigabyte. So there's probably a little bit more future in it as well. But how well do they stack up when it comes to performance? Well, to find that out, we've obviously been doing some benchmarking. We've actually run each of these cards against the same set of games in our benching rig. And to make sure that that's been done fair and to give the lower end a bit of a better chance, We've obviously been running it in a PCI generation 4 motherboard. First up we have Back for Blood, where all three graphics cards manage to maintain an average of over 60 frames per second, and 1% lows that were consistent throughout. The RX 6400 got an average of 62 frames per second, while the RX 6500 XT pulled away just a little, getting an average of 77. This is a great example of where the 8GB of VRAM and lack of kneecapping given to the RX 6600 though, really comes through getting an average of 113 frames per second, putting it in a completely different tier than the others. Death Stranding, we saw a similar picture to the previous game, but this time with the gap between the RX 6400 and the RX 6500 XT being closed quite a bit. The RX 6400 managed to get an impressive 67 frames per second, with the RX 6500 XT only just pulling away from it, getting an average of 76. The RX 6600 continued to show its strengths here, getting an average of 129 frames per second, and again, putting itself in a completely different tier. 1% lows in this game on all cards were much better, and the gameplay was pretty smooth regardless of the card we were using. Doom Eternal was a game that truly demonstrated the weaknesses of the two lower end cards, with the RX 6600 pulling a massive lead over them with an average of 180 frames per second. Although the RX 6400 getting an average of 67 and the RX 6500 XT getting an average of 83 still meant that the game was still more than playable, so let's hope the price difference between the cards really helps them make more sense. Red Dead Redemption 2 was one of the oldest games within the test suite and was also the first game we saw not all the cards could reach the goal of 60 frames per second. The RX 6400 managed to hold an average of just 50 frames per second, whereas the RX 6500 XT hit our target only just. The RX 6600 though demonstrated how demanding this game is though, receiving an average of 88 frames per second, so a lot of the overall performance issues here are down to the game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was the last game in our test suite and is usually the title that runs exceptionally well on modern AMD graphics cards. All of the cards tested managed to hit our target of 60 frames per second, with the RX 6400 getting an average of 61, the RX 6500 XT getting an average of 82, and as per all of the other games tested, the RX 6600 pulling a huge lead over them, getting an average of 133. Of course, from the results of these tests, you can clearly see that there is a world of difference between the two lower end cards and the RX 6600. This may be down to a number of things from the amount of VRAM the cards have to the PCI kneecapping the lower end cards received, but can this difference be justified when it comes to prices? 
To find out, we did some math. Using the average prices for these cards here in the UK, we can see that both the RX 6400 and the RX 6500 XT came out with the same cost of £2.11 per frame, whereas the RX 6600, due to its huge leaps in performance, comes out at a cost of £1.93 per frame, making it a much better option when it comes to cost to performance. But for those who literally don't have the money for the RX 6600, the other two graphics cards still provide a pretty decent budget option, especially when you're looking at the new market. So as you can see from all those benchmarks and the math that we've calculated, the true champion here is the RX 6600. This card is reasonably cheap. It has eight gigabytes of VRAM. The performance is pretty much unlocked, unlike the others, which can fall into traps due to the configuration they've got. And there are plenty models out there which stay super cool and quiet. But for those of you who just literally cannot afford these types of cards because they are over 200 pounds, the other two do give you some kind of option. For those of you looking for a low powered 1080p card, the RX 6400 actually gives you an option in the market. And for those who want a little bit more, but don't require the actual power consumption, the RX 6500 XT will be suitable for most games. And because they actually offer the same price to performance, you're not really going to make a bad decision on either of these. But I want to know what you think about these cards. Which entry level graphics card from AMD would you consider putting in your own system? Do you have any kind of requirements that means you have to go for one of these specifically? Or are none of these actually an option for you? And is the pre-owned market something that you would potentially look at? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and also drop this video a like so we know to do more and we'll catch you in the next one.